much. <clears throat> Our scripture tonight comes from 1 Peter chapter 3. Chapter for, 1. I'm sorry, 1 Peter chapter 1, <laughs> verses 3 through 8. 9. 1 Peter, let me say again. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. <laughs> Thank you. It's something different here. All right. But uh, that, uh, that's our scripture. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. You can look along in your scripture, or you can look along on the, the screen here. Let's read to our scripture. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who was kept, who are kept by the power of God through faith into salvation, ready to be re revealed in the last time. Wherein we greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, we are in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found into praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. In whom, though now you see him not yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. And my sermon title tonight is We Have Hope. We Have Hope. And the one idea that I'd like to get across is that we can face the trials and tribulations of every day because Jesus Christ has saved us from our sins. And our scripture tonight starts out, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now that word blessed, the Greek word there is where we get the English word eulogy. Like in a funeral, a eulogy. And a eulogy, the actual meaning of the word, is to say praiseful things about someone, to say good things, good and true things about someone. And we want to say good and true things about the Lord Jesus Christ. But we don't eulogize a dead person. We praise and we praise a living Savior who's risen from the dead. Amen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus was all God, and he was all man. The man, Jesus Christ, the human, his human nature, looked at God and called him God. He was God. But as God incarnate, his divine nature could look at God and call him Father. And blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever looked at it that way? that Jesus at that time was the only one who had the right to call God and Father and mean every word of it, and it be absolutely true that God was, Jesus is the man's God, and Father was Jesus the man's heavenly Father, and which according to his abundant mercy, not just mercy, but how much mercy? Abundant. Abundant mercy. And you see uh, these superlatives used in the scripture when it talks about his loving care. It's not just loving care, it's tender loving care and abundant mercy. And uh, you see that a lot. We have mercy through Jesus Christ. Amen. According to his abundant, uh, abundant mercy, hath begotten. And that word begotten means to give life to, to birth. God has birthed us. When we are in Christ, we're not just born physically, we're born spiritually. The Bible says that we're what? We're born again. And if you're, if you're, if you're born once, you're going to die twice. If you're born twice, you may only die once. 
if unless the Lord comes back, but if the Lord doesn't come back, you're only going to die once. If you need to be, you must be born again. And he has begotten us again into a lively hope. There's that, there's that modifier again, lively, not just a hope, but a lively hope. Hallelujah. And that word lively is the word zoa, and it's where we get the word life and zoology, <laughs> the study of life. And uh, it means we're a living hope. We don't worship a dead hope. We worship a living hope. Jesus Christ isn't in the tomb. He's risen from the dead. Amen. He's alive, and he is sitting at the right hand of God the Father. We worship a living hope. Jesus lives inside of us now. His Holy Ghost fills us now. It's a lively hope. And what is the proof that Jesus is who he said he is? What is the down payment? Well, it's his own empty tomb. His resurrection from the dead is our payment. It's our down payment. It's our earnest money. It's our deposit that we can depend on Jesus and we can trust him. And since and because Jesus has risen from the dead, that means that if he can do it, he promised us, us he can raise us up from the dead as well. And death is not the end. It's not the finish. It's not mm -hmm. the, the, there's more than that. The scripture tells us in my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you so. I go to prepare a place for you. And where I go, I'll come again. Jesus has promised all of that. So to an inheritance. So we have a, a lively hope to what? to an inheritance. Now, I don't know about you, but the longer I keep my stuff, it tends to break down. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> it amazes me how something can just sit, and when you stored it, it worked perfectly, but the moment you go back and try to use it, try to start it, it breaks, it doesn't work. You know, the, there's this thing in the universe called atrophy. It's the, where natural things just tend to break down. But our inheritance in heaven, it's incorruptible. It won't rust. It won't rot. Hallelujah. It won't go away. It won't break down. <clears throat> it's not material. It's, it's spiritual. It's something that God has prepared for us, and it is incorruptible, and it's undefiled. You know, everything in this creation is defiled. We live in a fallen universe. We live in a fallen earth. We live with fallen people. Uh, poor Linda married a sinner. <laughs> uh, it's a yeah, she's raised her hand up. Amen. Uh, but that's the truth. And it's uh, defiled. And Jesus and his grace and his mercy washes all that away. But we'll always be, have a sin nature. We'll always struggle. But in, a, in heaven, it'll be undefiled. I remember the song, no more crying there. I'm going to sing. I'm going to see the king. No more dying there. I'm going to see the king. Hallelujah. 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 I'm Hallelujah. going to see the king. And that it fadeth not away. Uh, it's going to be there no matter how long it's reserved for us. It's reserved in heaven, not for somebody else, but for you. Your inheritance in Christ Jesus is reserved in heaven for you. And so Jesus is our hope of the because of his resurrection to an incorruptible inheritance, and we are kept by the power of God. And boy, that's so reassuring to you and I, that we're not kept by our own power. We're not kept by our own works. We don't have to slug and slosh and sacrifice and pain and work hard to earn our way into heaven. Praise God, that's already been done for you and I by the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. And we are kept. It's a terrible thing. Not to be sure that you're a Christian. It's a terrible thing to have doubts. There's no need for any Christian to have doubts about their eternity. There's no need to say, I hope I'm a Christian. I hope I go to heaven. If Jesus has saved you, he saved you. Well, how do I know that he saved me? Well, you can know that he saved you because you can know who and what you're depending on. If you're depending on no one else and nothing else except the Lord Jesus Christ to be your only hope for your salvation, your forgiveness, and your eternal life, and if you are only depending on his sacrifice on the cross to be that for you, then when you ask Jesus to save you, he did, and he keeps you. No one can snatch you out of his hands. 
Jesus mm. is in God and God is in him. And no one can snatch Hallelujah. you and I out of his hand. We are kept by the power of God. And to say that you can't be kept is to deny his power. If God says it, if he has the, does he have the power to save you? Does he have the power to keep you? Well, of mm -hmm. course he does. And we are kept by the power of God through faith. And that word faith is pistuo. It means to depend on and to rely on. You know who and what you're depending on. And if you're depending on Jesus and you're depending on his sacrifice on the cross to atone for your sins, and if you've repented of those sins and asked him to save you, he has. And he will keep you unto salvation, and you will be revealed as a saved, purified, and glorified on the last day. And you and I can have that for that. So because of these things in verse 3, in verse 6, we not only rejoice, but we what? We greatly rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. That's something to get excited about. Are you excited about that, my friends, that Amen. Jesus Christ has saved you? This is real hope. And <clears throat> though now for a season, uh-oh, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Mm. You are in heaviness through mm. manifold temptations. You have to remember what was going on when Peter wrote these words. Emperor Kumo was the emperor Excuse of me? Rome. Uh, what? You said Como. Oh, I'm sorry. Emperor Nero was the <laughs> emperor of Rome at the time, and he was forbidding Christians to meet on their appointed day. He was forbidding them to worship. He was throwing them to the lions. He was taxing them extra than everybody else, and he was just blaming them for everything, and he denied everything that Jesus was doing at the time, Nero's saying, God didn't do that. Jesus didn't do that. I did that. But we know that that's the case, that this was a time Christians were in a difficult time. Uh, they were having a hard time, and they were being persecuted. And it was a dangerous time to be a Christian uh, at that time when this was written. He says, you were in heaviness and manifold temptations. And then in verse 7, he says that the trial of your faith, Mm -hmm. being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found into praise and honor and the glory of the appearing of Jesus Christ. Well, so what? Nero was get, putting him uh, to persecution. So what? That some of them were losing their lives. They had a Savior, and they knew it, and they lived like it. There was no doubt in their mind that Jesus was who he says he was. There was no doubt in their mind that Jesus risen from the dead. And even though they had not seen the Lord Jesus Christ, whom they loved, they, and they did not see him, they had the word of the Bible, they had the word of the apostles, they had the power of the Holy Ghost, they saw the miracles that was going on in the first century church, and they knew the power of God in their lives. And no matter what the emperor would throw at them, no matter what their neighbors and their friends would do, no matter what trials and what deprivations that they had to endure, they knew that Jesus Christ was who he said he was, and they could get through it. And you and I are going through difficult times right now. Uh, you may have financial problems. You may have employment problems. You may have health problems. Uh, you may not be able to withstand the pressures and stressors and the anxiety and the depression that you're facing right now, but you can know this that no matter what you're going through right now, <clears throat> Jesus Christ is your Savior. Hallelujah. And if he saved you from your sin, Hallelujah. if he forgives you of your sin, if he can solve that problem, he can get you through these difficult times now, no matter what the current emperor throws at us. And uh, we can do that, and we can have that together. And whom having not seen, we love. We can love Jesus, even though we don't see him. Because we can sense his presence. He has sent the Holy Spirit into our lives. And we are yet believing. And we can rejoice with joy unspeakable, full of glory. And what is all this for in verse 9? Receiving the end of your faith. 
even the salvation of your souls. It's going to be worth it, my friends. It's going to be worth it. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. And this day, that tonight, we are going to be celebrating uh, communion together uh, uh, and video and uh, electronically. So first thing I'd like to do, if you could, I'm going to give you a moment now to take uh, your elements, if you have them, and bring them forward. And if you can do this for me, let me get my glasses here. And if you can just put them in front of you or hold them in front of you and hear these words of institution. I have mine right here. Linda, do you have yours? I have mine. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We ask your blessings on this bread, or whatever we have that represents this bread, that as we partake of it, that we would remember and appreciate your broken body on the cross. Father, we ask your blessings upon our cups, that Lord, that as we partake of it, that we would remember your shed blood without which we have no remissions of our sins. Bless these elements in our hands, O Lord. Help us to remember our communion with you and one another. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. And after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup, and when he had sipped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink of it, in remembrance of me. Before we give the benediction, Just like to talk to you for a minute that this message has been a blessing to you. And if you feel the need to trust Christ as your Savior, if you've never done that before, I'd like to ask you to follow me in this prayer. Just pray with me. If you are in any doubt or if you'd like to become a Christian or if you'd like to trust Christ as your Savior, I'd just like you to bow your head and pray with me. Lord Jesus, I need you. Father, I admit that I have sinned against you and I am sorry for the things that I've done wrong. Right now, Lord Jesus, I am making a decision and a commitment to depend on and to rely on no one else and nothing else except you and your sacrifice on the cross to be my only hope for the forgiveness of my sins, for my eternal life, and for my hope. Lord Jesus, save me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for hearing my prayer according to your promise that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Did you pray that prayer just now? If you did, we would love to hear from you. 
you can know from the very moment that you asked Jesus to save you that he did, not based on anything you may have felt, but based on what he promised and who he is. He promised, Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. For God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that has the Son has the life. He who has not the Son of God has not the life. These things I have written unto you, who trust and depend on the name of the Son of God, that you may know, not hope so or wish, but that you may know that you have eternal life. When you ask Jesus to save you, he does. You become his child. He puts you in his family. He gives you the power of his spirit at your uh, disposal at that very moment, and that gift has to be developed. And he puts you into his family, and we would love to hear from you, and we would like to help you grow. So if you could give us a, a message or send us or some way let us know, you could send us a letter, anything to let us know and just say, Keith, I prayed the prayer, and I've become a Christian, and I would like to some more information on how to grow. You let us know. Now let's remain for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he pour his blessings upon you until we meet again. God bless you and go in peace. Happy Mother's Day weekend, and we will see you soon. God bless. Bye-bye.